Well, happy winter. As we're in these kinds of months, we love that cozy food, but we don't always need it to be heavy comfort food. We want the comfort sometimes that's just good, delicious, most of all, quick on a weeknight. And that is this tomato soup. This is the tomato soup I grew up with. And a lot of times we did a version of this and home canned it, preserved it, put it on shelves and then used it during the winter. But this is a great version that goes together really quick. And what I love is it's a creamy style tomato soup with guess what? No cream. So it's really healthy, but it is thicker, a little bit creamy with the help of white beans. They're a secret and you will love this secret. So to start, I'm going with a base of flavors here, which kind of seems interesting for certain tomato soups. If you've made a lot of tomato soups, a lot of times there's maybe only a few ingredients. But in our tomato soup, we always like to have a little bit of a vegetal undertone, which is gonna come from onions, carrots, and some celery. This gives it like a really good rounded out flavor. The vegetables just really cook into it. And in the end, when you're blending this all together, you don't know it's in there, but you get a great underlying flavor and that's exactly what you want. So I'm gonna take these vegetables and I have some butter melting on the stove. And butter is important here because that's really rounding out the flavor and adding in just a great rich flavor that you really need to me with the tomato. The tomato on its own can be sometimes acidic, sometimes sweet, but you need that butter to really give it good flavor. So I'm putting all the vegetables right in there and then to really help them kind of sweat out and release their inherent water, I'm gonna put on some salt. For one, tomatoes need a good dose of salt. So we're getting a good base layer, some black pepper. I'm gonna stir this just to make sure they're all in contact with that butter. And then what I'm doing as opposed, we don't want sauteing here. We don't wanna add color. We don't wanna add browning. Instead, what we want is really for them to soften, to cook down. So I'm actually gonna do it on low, put the lid on. And what they're gonna do is just slowly release all their liquid and really soften in that kettle. While that veg is really cooking and it's just softening and getting really good, I wanna get some garlic ready. I get large garlic because I home grow mine, so I'm using two really large cloves. But garlic is that great base flavor, so I'm making sure just to cut off that root end. You can see, there it is. And then what I like to do is just take the back of my knife, side of my knife, I should say, smash it. And when you smash it, it just opens it up so you can take it off very easily, that skin. Because sometimes that skin, it is just annoying to take off. Now remember, this is gonna be a blended soup. And why do I love blended soups? Less prep and less work for us in the kitchen. So I'm going through and making sure to smash these up a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna rough chop them because we're gonna blend it. So we don't have to worry about pieces of like garlic all over. We can just cut it all up and just throw it in like this. And that's kind of the best part. So right here, I wanna throw this in at the end. So if you come over here and look, I want you to see how, when I take this lid off, look how much liquid has really drawn up. See all that liquid? Usually when you're sauteing, you're evaporating and cooking off the moisture. In this case, we're really keeping it, trapping it in there, and that's what was helping these cook because that's what we want, just for them to soften. So we're adding in, we have all that wonderful garlic, which is really gonna flavor it, add so much delicious. And now what I'm gonna do, sounds like a lot, but we're gonna add a whole amount here of tomato paste. So what does tomato paste do? We use it in a lot of things because it's just condensed tomatoes, which means it has a ton of tomato flavor. So adding in all this tomato paste adds a sweetness. It also just adds like, it packs a huge punch of like the essence of tomatoes. And what I love about canned tomatoes, and you could use home frozen ones. I do freeze my own here at home and can my own but I like to make this recipe applicable for whatever you find. But what I like when you buy canned tomatoes, they are canned at their peak ripeness, and that is what you want. So we're gonna let that cook a little bit. And while that's cooking, I'm gonna add a few seasonings here. We're gonna add a little bit of chili flake, not a lot, we're gonna say a half a teaspoon. It kind of depends on what you like for a spice level. This amount is not gonna be that you notice the spice. It's gonna be just more that you have this little bit of warming, and that's kind of what you want to be on your tongue. And then just a little bit of celery seed. Now celery seed, a little bit goes a long way. So again, we're going to a very small amount. And what that's gonna do is have this underlying flavor that you don't know, know what it is, but you just know you like it. And that's the important part. So that is really cooking, which is what I like. And now we're gonna add two cans. And this is what is great about this recipe. You don't have to do too much cooking. We're gonna add a can of white beans. I drained off most of the liquid. What white beans do, they add a creaminess once it's blended. So you don't even know they're in there. When this is blended up, no one would ever guess there's white beans in it. But they would say this has great body 
just a great texture to it and kind of this beautiful creaminess. And then tomatoes with their juice. You can do diced tomatoes, you could do whole tomatoes. I like the diced ones, but look at that. That's all it is. So now we're gonna let this continue cooking, bring it up to a boil, turn it to a simmer just so it cooks. We want all the carrots and everything to be cooked fully through. So when they blend, they become really smooth. It'll be a little while and then we'll be blending and having a beautiful soup. The soup has been cooking and how you know it's done is it's obviously cooked together, but you wanna just check the carrots and make sure they're fully cooked. Everything just needs to kind of meld together and that's the point here. So now we're gonna blend it. Now you can use an immersion blender and I think that can work. I do think in this case, a higher power blender, like a canister blender can actually do a little bit better job to make sure that it's really creamy. We want those beans to be fully broken down this is the one part that it can be a little messy. You wanna take a little care. Anytime you're blending something hot or warm like this is, you want to make sure you take the right precautions because if you just put it all together tightly with the lid on really tight, that steam can actually cause it to explode and blow the lid open, which you don't wanna do because that's gonna make a mess. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be dangerous. So we don't wanna do that. So instead what we're doing is we're pouring it all in there there it all goes. Look at all those wonderful pieces. It smells delicious, just like this. And that's exactly what you want. And now when I'm gonna blend it, right before I do, you know what I like to add in? Just a splash of some apple cider vinegar. What that does is anytime you add a little bit of acidity at the end, it adds a nice brightness to something and helps kind of wake up all the flavors. So we're gonna add in a splash just to help bring it all together. We're gonna put this lid on and notice I have the hole right here I took out that piece. I'm gonna take a rag, put it over, so I can allow the steam out, but don't want the splatters out. So we're gonna turn this on, make sure it runs until it's completely smooth, and we'll have soup. You can see it really doesn't take long, but this is why we put the rag over there. See all the splatters that would have come out into the kitchen? That wouldn't have been good. And you can see it's still really hot. So you can do this ahead of time. You could even put this in the fridge, have it done, ready to go. I did add also about a half a cup to a cup of water just to thin it out and get the right consistency. Whenever you wanna pour something in like this, I like to put a spoon there and pour it onto the spoon because it helps it not splatter near as bad. And scrape it back in there. It looks delicious. It looks just like what you want. A great soup and there I did. I made the splatters anyway. You know, as, as careful as you can be, you still do. So I wanna keep this warm, and while it's keeping warm on the stove, I have some grilled cheese going, because we have to have it with grilled cheese. So I'm gonna put it on really low, just to keep it warm. Make sure it's back to heat it all the way through. I'm gonna turn my grilled cheese. We're gonna be having, just guys, a little bit of, to me, the perfect meal. And then we'll try it. My grilled cheese are done. I like to use a good, I love to make sourdough, so this is a good crusty sourdough. And I like cheeses inside like Gouda, and I always do like a triple cream brie because I love the way it melts and it has so much flavor and it's just good. And then we have our soup, which I, is there anything better on a cool day, cold day, sub-zero day, than a good bowl, I mean look at that, of that beautiful, luscious, you can see the texture, you can see the thickness, I need a good grind of some fresh black pepper on top. I just think that finishes it. Now, if my mom was here or if we were growing, if I was growing up, what we would always do, you're not gonna know this unless you're local, but Sturzian's potato chips are an Iowa thing, Southeast Iowa thing. And you would always put Sturzian potato chips on top or just like a plain Lay's potato chip if you didn't have Sturzian's. But we're just gonna enjoy the soup today. It's, oh, I love how it's hot. Look at that beautiful texture of it. Those beans really do create that perfect texture where it's almost like a creamed tomato soup. That's a two bite. Mm, okay, I love this. One, I love the balance. It has a slight tang to it from like the tomatoes, but it has a good sweetness to it too from that tomato paste. And it has good underlying flavors where it's just like a full tomato vegetable flavor, but not vegetable like a vegetable soup. Just a good rounded out flavor and that's what you want. I really think the cracked pepper on top finishes it, if you ask me. It's the perfect accompaniment to rich cheeses with a grilled cheese, the butteriness of that dipped in it. And it's really that perfect thing on a winter's day when it's cold and you want something just to warm you up because the flavor is just comforting. The warmth is comforting. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you become a fan of simple, classic, delicious homemade tomato soup because it really is 
Like, don't even tell me about the canned stuff. This is good. So share this recipe around so everyone can see how easy and fun and delicious this really is to make good food at home. Check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe that you can print off. All my other recipes. Until next time, make some good food and enjoy it. That's the point. Gather around yourself, your friends, your family. Enjoy some good food and be happy.